right, and we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our great shows. And if you can, please give us that five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break or Lakerholics.com, it is truly appreciated. I'll tell you what, if you could just gift wrap and wrap it up and store the Lakers' first half against the Chicago Bulls today, I would hope you could because it was just a sensational first half for the Los Angeles Lakers when they got out to a 30-point lead. AD was truly sensational. LeBron was the MVP himself. Once again, I know a lot of people around the league are trying to say, okay, let's go for Embiid or let's go for Jokic. And I know both have had stellar games today, but right now you still got to go ahead with the the man that's leading out the NBA right now. But let's go for right now what happened with the game. Came out with a strong first half and decided in the second half to call it a day. Now, Mm -hmm. mind you, they still won by 11, 101-90, but... The second half performance, they just decided to go ahead and not have that same kind of intensity. And we've talked more about them taking their foot off the gas more times than not. And this was one of those occasions. But they were so far ahead, it really didn't matter as the Lakers once again won 101-90. to And here today to talk about the game, first off, is the mastermind behind Lakerholics.com. You got to go ahead and check out his articles on medium.com and also everything that he does for Lakerholics.com. It is Laker Tom and Laker Tom. Again, just I wish you could just wrap up and just bottle that first half performance because it was just so sensational. Maybe we should do our podcast at halftime, Gerald. I think we should. I think we should. That's a good suggestion, I think. I mean, we, we held them to 33 points in the first half and we scored 38 in the second half. <laughs> that was a. The sum of the game there, pretty much. I think I think there was a point in time too where we were within a chance of setting a record for the lowest quarter that we've had. I don't know for how long, but it, they they finally managed to pull it out and get 20, 18 points for the quarter rather than beating the seventeen. But let's just focus on the things that really count. It's a win, the ninth win in a row. Uh, we really never were threatened at all, despite some sloppy play in the second half and a lackadaisical attitude. We were up by 30 at the halftime, and it was probably one of the best halves that we played all year. Uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron James both played less than 30 minutes. The ultimate in load management, in my opinion. (laughs) You know, we didn't, we've shot 22% from three, um, but we only, we only made four threes, but we only took like, you know, 16, 17 shots. Four out of 19. You know. Uh, it was a great defensive performance to hold them to 33 points. That's the lowest point total of this year by any Laker opponent in the half. So let's hang our hats on the first half and, and flush the second half and and get ready to move on, you know. I mean, Monday night we've got the Cavaliers, and then next Wednesday we've got the 76ers. Absolutely. And, and those should, you know, those are the 76ers game and the Celtics game are the two games that I think are – key and I think this team is going to be ready to play those games uh, if we can if we can avoid a trap game in Detroit on Thursday on a back-to-back and I think that we have a good shot at, at finishing this homestand six seven and oh or this road trip seven and oh and uh, you can't you can't do better than that I mean it's I mean listen after after having a lead of, of 63 to 33 at the half human nature just takes over at that point in time. And you figure there's no way these guys can come back. And we played about as poorly as we could play in a second half. And, and the game really was never in danger. Um, so, you know, wrap it up, put a bow on it. It's another win. Lakers move on. And also here today to talk about the game is the man indeed behind all the great stuff that he does at Lakerholics.com. It is Magic Man and Sean Grice, aka Magic Man. Uh, again, we want to go ahead and compliment the Lakers on the first half. But if you're Frank Vogel, your hair's got to be getting gray when it concerns <laughs> these second halves and these times where the Lakers just take their foot off the pedal. 
Yeah, absolutely, Gerald. And I mean, it's uh, it's it's re- irrespective of the opponent, really. I mean, they could be playing a great team. They could be playing a poor team. You could see an 18-point lead go down to four on any given night, depending on how they feel about <laughs> their effort. Looking looking back at the game, it's true that Chicago didn't really have the firepower to come back, but that doesn't mean if we play a team like, oh, I don't know, the Warriors, they do have that kind of firepower to come back. And if you look at if you look at the game of basketball, the twenty five to thirty point lead is the most precarious one. There have been countless times, I, I can't count how many, the Warriors blew a 30-point lead to the Clippers a couple years ago in the playoffs. The Lakers blew a 25-point lead with the Celtics in an NBA Finals game. So these big leads that you create, they're great, but it's really hard to sustain that effort for 48 minutes against a very, very good team. A poor team, sure, but a very good team, very difficult. It was very difficult as far as for the Lakers in the second half to muster any kind of offense. Laker Tom, what are you taking away from that second half that they can go ahead and focus in on? I mean, yeah, of course, it was obviously a lack of focus and things that I've talked about and you've talked about ad nauseum this year that the Lakers seem to keep falling into. But is there any way that they or maybe just matchup issues or something that... You know, because these coaches at halftime are making adjustments. Obviously, in the Bulls' case, you have to make a lot of adjustments. Yeah, the Lakers are screaming at the entire lineup. <laughs> exactly. But the Lakers just have to go ahead and start maybe doing something that second half just to see what they can do to energize the team even more. Do you have any suggestions? Well, you just have to face reality, Gerald. This was not going to be a 60-point win. There aren't any 60-point wins in the NBA. No, but I'm just saying, you know, about, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm it's saying, like but, Sean says, uh, uh, you get a 30 point lead and you know that at best, at best, man, you're going to hold that lead or maybe give it a 25 or 20. But these are grown men. They know they have the game won. They're human beings. They know that there's no way that the other team could come back. Yeah, one out of 10 games, it's going to bite you in the rear. It didn't do it tonight. It didn't even get close to it tonight. So, you know, the coaches aren't going to worry about it. The players aren't going to worry about it. And it's going to happen again. And so, you know, you just have to live with it as a fan. Next time, let's just do the halftime. Let's just do the podcast at halftime. And then we don't have to go through all of this angst about, you know, about how we blew the big lead and, and so forth. Yeah, Sean. <laughs> I think for a sustained effort, uh, it, the offense will come and go. I just think defensively this team needs to eventually find a way to just lock down mentally as a group together for however long you're out there. And the offense will come and go, but as long as that defense sustains the effort, I mean, look, people thought at best we'd be maybe a 10, 12, eight best defense. I mean, we're number one. So the coaching yeah. staff has made it just with a whole new scheme with a whole new scheme. Right. The right. charges, but, the charges we took in the first half were brilliant defense. Well, you know what I think is really important, even with the new guys coming in, the, the guys who are already there, they understand Frank Vogel's base defense. And I think if you understand basketball from a simplistic point of view, you can go from there. It's like Coach he always said, once you have the blueprint of the foundation, your fundamentals are sound, then you can build from there. Well, also, uh, too, we, we shot poorly from three. And we've been so used to that. But but you could just have to realize that no matter what you say about focus and everything else, Gerald, it really comes down to that you're not going to play as hard on defense or offense when you're ahead by 30 as when you're in a close game or when you're down by 10 and trying to come back. Um, And players pace themselves. I mean, a couple of the mistakes, some of the mistakes were were by guys like LeBron. AC dribbling the ball out of bounds, you know. Dumb passes on inbounds a couple of times from guys just, you know. And and it's just because they're going through the motions because they know the game is over. It's one 
you know, yeah, and yeah, it creates bad habits and so forth, but it doesn't do any good to just, to, to just worry about it because this well, these are the things Frank, Frank Vogel works on, but these are the things that Frank Vogel mm-hmm. looks at. And obviously Monday's game was a, mm-hmm. a reminder that if you take that foot off the, the pedal, it can really hurt you mm-hmm. as a team. Yeah. And like yeah. you said, those one out of 10 times, well, that one out of 10 times, was Monday. You right, just don't one out of ten times is one loss in seventy two games. It's not it's not like your child getting run over in the middle of the street. I know, but the you Lakers have to, you have to treat it a little differently than But than, right now when you're talking yeah. about jockeying for position, there are several teams that are vying for the top of the uh, whole NBA right now. And and to me that is something as far as playoff positioning because it's no well, longer wait a minute. In a wait a minute. I, I remember you saying that it didn't matter. The regular season didn't matter because we'll, well turn it in the playoffs. Well right now the Lakers I really was the one who than... said that they were gonna turn it on the whole year and well run maybe away the Lakers well maybe because the Lakers are undefeated on the road. Maybe they should just tank the whole season until they get to number eight so that they can go ahead and be on the road for the entire playoffs. Maybe that'll work out because they sure aren't finding the rhythm at home just yet. Go ahead, Sean. Uh, Gerald, I was just going to piggyback off what you were saying. I think that's, that's a key right now. I mean, you have, you have a group of players go into the COVID protocol for a couple of weeks. That could be the difference between the third seed and the seventh seed. And you're right. I think this is going to end up costing a couple teams at least, maybe home court advantage. And who knows what happens in the playoffs? Absolutely. And, yeah, and there's home court, home court again. Chances are, Sean, that home court's not going to matter as much because it's going to be like a bubble home court. Go ahead, Sean. I, I, I no, I'm, it depend. It just depends on where the ball is being tipped up, right, Tom? Because it, it reminds me of that old quote from Animal Farm: "All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others." I mean, if you're playing, <laughs> if you're if you're playing in Brooklyn, maybe home court doesn't matter. But if you're playing in mm-hmm. Indiana, who knows how many people the, they're going to be able to let in. I mean, it's, well, it's I don't know. You know, work out that Denver, way. Denver might be the one place where it matters because of the altitude, you know, or Salt Lake. Salt Lake is not as yeah. Salt uh, Lake City. Yeah, but but I'm not worried about the Nuggets and I'm not worried about the Jazz. Uh, the well, team that we're going to worry about is going to be the Clippers. If we take care of the Clippers, I, then we'll be the champions. And that's one thing I wanted to ask you guys as part of our conversation today: Is Utah? You don't seem as concerned about to, as them. I, in my top five NBA teams, I put them at number yeah, three. Yeah, I know you did. And I, I think did. that's, well, I think it's very well deserving because they are playing incredible yeah, basketball I'm not insulting right Utah again. Let's not go through that all over <laughs> no, again. No, but I'm just saying, you know, they're playing incredible basketball right now. They mm-hmm. have the, the NBA's hottest streak right now as far as wins. They did beat and actually just took care of Golden State, dismantled them by 19 today. Uh, and it just... It's really something that people have to take notice. I mean, they they don't have that reliance on two players or three top players. They have Donovan Mitchell, but they have a solid base of players. They have mm-hmm. a nice roster, which is something not every team has. As we've seen, where all these top well, they got continuity, teams. which is yeah. which is one of the things that helps them a lot because they don't have a lot of turnover like a lot of teams have had and so forth. Um, they've got a good coach. Uh, Quinn's always done a great job. So, you know, there's certain things that they're going to do well and and do well consistently. I I just don't think that they're, I don't think that they have the talent to break into the top five. And I don't think they're going to be there at the end of the year. It's just, you know, I I actually think that there's a chance that maybe there'll be three teams from the East in the top five. I think the Lakers and the Clippers are, are well, well beyond everybody else in the West. Well, besides Philadelphia, I mean, if you're going to mention Milwaukee and Brooklyn, right now they're not playing like it. Both of yeah. those teams have got a, a lot of issues, especially because they're so top-heavy. We even right. saw Brooklyn tonight. They almost gave up a big lead to yeah. Miami, and, and they have to out, literally outscore everybody at this point in time. Right. Whereas but Miami, like- you know, Miami's another example. This was a team that, that I said before when they weren't going to do as well outside of the bubble uh, as they did last no year in the Jimmy, bubble. No Jimmy, no hero, though. No Jimmy, yeah. no hero. I think that this is one of those, this is, you know, we're, you realize that we're almost at the one-fourth of the way through the season. And some teams, some teams have missed like six or seven games. 
Yeah. They're going to be some real reckonings to, you know, how they're going to make the schedule balance out, or we're going to have to switch to percentages like we did in the bubble as to, you know, as to where people end up in the, in their playoff. This is Raphael from NBA draft junkies.com. And you are listening to the Lakers fast break. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. The better that these Marvel films do, the higher the standards are going to be for not just other films in general, but other Marvel films also. I think it's really hard to end a show with this many fans in a satisfying way. That's the Pop Culture Cosmo Show. And the PCC Multiverse. Playing worldwide on radio seven days a week and wherever you get your podcasts. What well, one thing we we do have to realize is that the the TV contract is huge. Yeah. So if the if the uh, networks want an East and West Coast game at the in the middle of March or at the the end of March, that's what they're going to get. I think it's a bad idea. Well, I they could end up. With, they game. I think that they actually. De- it's going to depend upon what COVID's going to decide what's happening. Because well, we may I end up seeing should, a bubble. We may, may see a bubble for the playoffs. I don't. I should, think that's certainly a it's possibility. Pos- it's possible. We know it worked. La- think, we know it worked last year. But if you look at the at the 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 COVID protocol cases and the teams going in and out, it's been from from interstate travel. It's been an East yeah. Coast traveling to a West Coast team, and that team ends up having five guys who need to sit out. Or you have a team traveling from Chicago to Washington. But it seems to me that the teams that have been having the problems haven't been the top five teams on any of our lists. I yeah, mean, that's, there's something about the determination and discipline. Well, and the, Philadelphia had a little bit of a problem. A little bit of a problem, but not like not like Washington's had and no. and some of these teams that, well, they, that they know that, you know, and it comes from everybody. It's like Kyle Kuzma said. Everybody in the Lakers knows what's at stake. You go out and break protocol, regardless of whether you get caught or not, you risk coming back and infecting your teammates and destroying a chance for a championship. And if you're really serious and you think you really have a chance at a championship, you're going to be a little more attentive than the teams that don't have a chance. Um, well, and and it and it's different sport to sport. If you look at the NBA Harden was allowed to go to Vegas and Atlanta because right. he was thought to have – if you look at the NHL, for example, one of their stars, Alexander Ovechkin, they all were in the same room together, and some of those guys already had COVID. The Washington Capitals were fined $100,000. That's not a small fine. Michael Porter Jr. has caught COVID twice. Right. And there's actually some players now in the league that have caught COVID twice. So, I mean, those those things about, oh, well, you can catch it uh, and you get it. And if you do okay from and you come out of it okay, oh, you've got the antibodies, you're all in the clear. No, that's not necessarily well, we the got case. variants now that that may not be as true of, you know. Exactly. So that's, yeah. uh, that's adding on to the problem. But I agree with you, Tom. Uh, maybe a bubble playoff might be a scenario that the league has to strongly consider. God, I, I know, not, you know, I hope not, but but it's it's got to be. I mean, if this is unless this vaccine distribution gets a lot better and a lot right. more quickly, I understand there's a new administration place that. But again, it's it's about the cards that they were dealt, and if they weren't dealt the right cards, they can only do so much right now. Now, yeah. coming two three months down the line, it is more on them. But I don't know exactly the cards that have been dealt with them now. So we have to wait and see exactly how we can go ahead and expedite expedite this, how we can speed this up as far as distribution so we can get a little bit more comfortable in not only watching these games but also participating in And we can feel better about the league going forward. And these players can feel better about how they go ahead and, and be able to interact with themselves going going forward as well. But so. if, you, if you think about the whole Biden formula of having a million – a day and a hundred days for a hundred million. Yeah. Um, it's a great goal. I mean, I know it's a great goal, that, but it's not going to include NBA players at that point in time. And some people have said that's because not, they're not going to be in one of the priority groups. They're going to, unless they're, unless they get deemed by somebody as essential workers. <laughs> I think I mean, that's, what, I think it's a realistic 30 million people in the country. 
as long as you you have the supplies, it is a realistic goal to do 100 million in 100 days. Yeah, I think but, I think I well, it should be easy. We're doing 850 thousand a day should, now. Should should should, right. but again, we're, we've been dealing with a lot yeah. of these issues but it's, where there's still there's 330 million people in this country. Yeah, and I can't believe that the basketball players are in that 100 million. I, I, maybe they'll find their way in. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, you know. yeah, you know, I mean. I, I know I have an appointment Tuesday morning to get my vaccine. Oh, good. That's awesome to hear. I'm and, very happy to know, hear and, that. And supposedly in California, which ranks last among all 50 states as of two days ago, in the number, in the percentage of, of, of vaccines that have been actually administered that they've received. But I, I know that uh, I'm finding people left and right around me, uh, probably because of the older age group that I'm in versus you two, um, but at least at least it, it seems to be accelerating. My sister was telling me that in San Diego, she got her vaccine and they they put eight cars in and they have a whole bunch of tents in Petco Park. And you, you pull into the tents, eight cars at a time. They vaccinate you. They wait 15 minutes to see if you had an adverse reaction. And then, boom, you're out and eight more cars are in there. Well, I, the thing with me is I would say the first thing I would do is 24-7. Any large scale operation yep. go to 24 7 people well, will come they got, at they gotta get more production they gotta get more Vegas, production i i know in production yeah i understand it's it's all dependent on production and supply and things yeah. of that nature I, but if you have the supply let's say i mean right here in vegas we're a 24 7 town or at least we were before covid hit we could do 24 7 there are major it's locations good. across this country you just I know have to only, get all of the swabs you have to get those little little tips that they need yeah. for the vaccinations yeah. It's, it's that supply chain thing that is a whole I understand, but I'm saying uh, that's one deal. thing. If you want to speed this up, there's there's other ways you can go ahead and do yeah. it. There's ways you can really get this done. One last question before we hit up on the on back on the Lakers. And Laker Tom, you said you're getting vaccinated on Tuesday. Is that correct? Right, correct. Is your wife be, going to be the one that's allowed to go ahead and stick you with the needle? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure because is your wife asking she could where she that you know uh, she wanted to ask the nurse where, that she can go ahead. And no, stick she has an appointment on Tuesday too, but she's not one hundred percent eligible yet. Okay, I just wanted so, to make sure. Uh, supposedly yeah. on the twenty on the twenty fourth or twenty fifth, they're going to have uh, sixty five and older eligible. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just I'm, the reason why I'm saying is because my wife's a nurse, and I know and when my time comes around. I think my wife will probably volunteer and then she'll suggest exactly where she Well, I don't know if I would allow my wife to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, she'll you'll see me running for a second there, trying to, you know, yeah. after where she gets this me. Laker Tom can get pretty aggressive at times. I, exactly. I mean, I, I would rather get, I'd rather have somebody else administer the needle, frankly. Are you right there. Are you, okay. Are you, ble- are you bleeder, Gerald? Well, no. <laughs> I, I, I think, well, like, here's a scenario. You see, if my wife does it, because... I would be pulling my arm, my my sleeve up, and she would say, "Oh no, that's not where I'm going to go." <laughs> so, Bend well, over, hang yeah, on. exactly. So I will just say this: uh, I'm hoping everybody out there gets their chance very soon, yeah. if they haven't already, to go ahead and get vaccinated. Uh, and continue thoughts and prayers and health for everyone out there, for our listeners. And we cannot thank you enough for yep. just listening to us jest right now. But it is all in good. Yeah, if you get a chance to get the shot, get the Do shot. It. Exactly. I you couldn't know, agree don't with you. Get cool. and, and frankly, at this point in time, I'm double masking everywhere I go. You and I both, my friend. But Magic Man is a first responder. Have you gotten vaccinated yet? We're getting vaccinated next week. You're getting vaccinated next week. He's getting vaccinated next week. Never mind. Moving on. There's, you know, <laughs> I'm left <laughs> out of the call. essential workers, aren't they? Yes, 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 he, yes but, but he, there's obviously the, yeah. our dumb dumb governor decided to make us essential now. So, well, I, you know, you guys you are know, pretty essential. amazing because in Marin, in my county, they actually decided that all of the school employees were essential. Yes, before mm-hmm. even people my age. Uh, I, I mean, that's uh, again, there, there's just been no right, 100% right way of dealing with this. And no, it's different right in every single this. county across this entire country, and which that's is part, totally part ridiculous. Of, it's part of the problem, right there. Wow, Couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, even in your country, Sean, same yeah. thing. It's nobody, nobody's had this, you know. If it's the case, 
if it would have started, if it would have gone back in time, I would have said, give me on a flight to New Zealand, and then <laughs> there you go. I would have been all set. But before we head on out, guys, I do want to stretch again. AD having the game today. LeBron yeah. did not have a great game. Six uh, six turnovers, didn't look like himself. Took a maybe coasting attitude for, say, missed a lot of layups. He did get fouled a lot. But I want to go ahead before we head on out and stress AD, who has not been AD all year. Today was a different story. Do you think, Sean, and I'm going to hit Sean up for this first, do you think it was because of the home cooking in Chicago, where he's from? I think that's part of it, Gerald. I do. I really do. And even though the, the the crowd wasn't there for him, his family, and THT, too. It was a homecoming from yep. him. Yes. It was a little disappointing. He couldn't have family and friends watch him either. But, yes, I do think a part of it was home cooking. But I also think a part of it is if you watch AD, he's missing some bunny jumpers that normally just go in. Yeah. I think it's a case of just of just him just taking more and making more. I, I think with him, it's just about repetition. Same with free throws. He's struggling at the beginning. He was 7 of 9 tonight. He's picked it up. He's yep. almost at 80%. He's flirting with it. So he's he's trying to get better. Yes, I think, I think it's also the bounce back effect. You know, um, it's a whole different thing than last year when if AD didn't have a good game, we might not have won the game. And if AD and LeBron had both subpar games, there was no chance that we would win the game. So this year it's a lot different. And and, and I think you see, I mean, look, look at look at their averages. LeBron is averaging like 21 points a game, I think, and AD 24 points a game. Mm-hmm. This, these are two guys that were like 27, 28 points a game last year. I, I actually find it kind of, kind of reassuring that everybody sort of is that LeBron. You know, there's I, there is all this talk of the MVP talk about about Embiid because Joel's had a great year and and uh, uh, Jokic just had a great year. There's no doubt about that. So I can see people talking about them, but. But the consensus, really, if you if you listen to enough of the people around the league, it's LeBron's MVP year, um, and he's doing that with lower numbers that he's lower points, lower minutes than he's ever done before, and a better lineup. Um, there was a great stat that, that that I saw on Twitter, which was that the Lakers right now, with AD with LeBron off the floor, have a positive net rating, and no team. No LeBron James team in the history of his career has ever had a positive rating when he was on the bench. All of those teams, even the Miami teams. Well, we talked about this before last year, how big of a, a difference there was when he went to the bench when it was just yeah. AD and I mean, reserves. We only have a one point, like 1.2 net rating with yeah. AD when LeBron goes to the bench, but at least it's positive. Yes, yes. Um, it's not such a hemorrhaging wound as we saw before. Like and, I, and I think this is one of the things that there's been several articles out recently, and, I, and it's a theme that I've been, I wanted to write about, but there's been so many good articles already written about it that, that it's not worth it, which is that you haven't seen anything from this Lakers team yet. Because when you look at the stats behind the team and what they're doing, LeBron and AD have not really had to be Le- playoff LeBron and playoff AD. And in effect, AD's defensive rating and LeBron's defensive ratings are are actually in the lower half of the team. Both of them are, LeBron is slightly uh, slightly better than the team rating, but AD is not even playing as well as the team has played. So there's a great room for improvement. There's some room for uh, disimprovement and, and falling to the mean in our three-point shooting because I don't think that we're the third best three-point shooting team in the league. And I think that we'll, we'll, we'll see some games. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see that percentage go down at, through the year. KCP is not going to shoot 56%. And, and AC right now is leading the league. <laughs> well, uh, Caruso. Shooting. Actually, Seth Curry is number one. Alex Caruso is number well, two. No, and- but during, the game, during the game, it was announced that Curry had missed a couple of shots and AC had hit his first shot. And so yeah. he, there was a point in the game where he was number one in the league. Exactly. Um, but it's number of attempts too, because yeah. remember Caruso and His also Curry. Of... disqualify him because yeah. he doesn't shoot that much. Same but... thing with Curry because he was out but of the game. See, the thing about it, and this is, this is why I really don't worry about the second half, Gerald. This team is even so much better than what we're seeing right now. 
they have not tapped they have not tapped their potential yet and they're going to once we get into the down to the stretch run once we get into the playoffs and i don't care whether it's bubble or whether it's not a bubble whether there's fans or whether there's not fans when lebron and ad get into that mode where they're really playing championship basketball and you add to them all of the players that we've got i mean do you see trez tonight he's shooting over 70 percent from the line he nailed those four straight four straight free throws at the end there and even THT, THT made three out of three from the line. The, the kid is a 90% free throw shooter, uh, which bodes well for his, his long range shooting. Um, Markeith Morris was the guy who sat on the bench tonight, primarily because Frank is just really trying to not, not put guys in there for a few minutes when, when, you know, rather than having I mean, somebody sit out so that we can run a regular rotation. And, and a, a, THT was the guy for three games in a row. And this was Morris's chance. Somebody else will sit out down the road or we'll get a break for LeBron or we'll get a break for AD. But this team is, you can't expect them to go through the whole season and play at a playoff level. We're going to see great halves like we saw, and then we're going to see some second halves and we just have to live with it because they are, they are that much better than most of the teams. And there aren't going to be many games where you're going to see them really get ready like they did against Milwaukee. I mean, what we saw in Milwaukee was really the first time that we've seen the Lakers play a whole game of that level of quality against that kind of competition. It's been a very erratic first half of first fourth of the season for the NBA. Um, you know, you look at some of these teams that I mean, I can't believe how bad the Pelicans are. And what happened to Dallas? They just got it wiped again tonight. Yes. Um, at home, no less. At home. Yeah, well, at home don't matter much now anymore. Exactly. Right? But by a team that was thought of much less in Houston, right. especially after trading Harden away. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more on that. There's a lot of surprises. You know, and, and, and then the Cavs taking care of taking care of the taking care of the Nets two times in a row. This is something like the bubble. It's just a different type of situation that we're not it's unprecedented and there are some teams that have an advantage. And those are the teams that that have leadership like LeBron and AD. We're signaling the ref for a quick timeout, but we'll be back with more of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Hey, Lakers fans. Looking for the best place to go for up-to-date news, information, original videos, articles, podcasts, opinion pieces, and discussions about the world champion, Los Angeles Lakers, well, look no further than Lakerholics.com. With a legion of followers always there talking about everything Lakers and the NBA, there's no better place to go to share your fandom as the team heads toward another championship run. So stop by and be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. But before we head on out, we're going to talk about what you guys are working on for Lakerholics.com. So, Magic Man, bequeath us with that knowledge <laughs> of what you're working on at Lakerholics.com. Well, Gerald, um, shortly after we last spoke Thursday, the Utah Jazz were coming off uh, a really great win against the Pelicans. And in that game, the Pelicans were up by 20. Uh, the Jazz came back, and after the game, Shaquille O'Neal inexplicably decided to, for some reason, go after Donovan Mitchell. Now, I, I don't. Know. I heard that. I don't think Shaq. Big man bully. <laughs> yes, I don't think his beef is with Spida. His beef is with Rudy. And Gerald, you had brought you had brought up the topic of Rudy's contract a few weeks ago, and I think you and Shaq would find a lot of common ground with why he shouldn't have been given that much coin. However, it's not; it has nothing to do with Donovan Mitchell. And, no, and I, I and I really didn't understand his criticism either. I thought LeBron had a great tweet where where he was talking about him clowning donovan and him basically saying look there's a fine line between constructive criticism and soft hate i've been getting soft hate my whole career i can smell it from a mile away and i think that's what Shaq was giving donovan and uh, i'm just gonna write a post 
uh, explaining why I think, you know, I think Jack's a bully. I really do. I, I, I admire his entrepreneurship. I admire his ability to be a dominant big man. I think in some ways he is charitable. Uh, but I think he also is the kind of person who just tries to start beefs for no reason other than he wants to go viral. And, and that's I, the I problem, that though, right now. I mean, they don't need to because Inside the NBA has been a long-standing franchise that everybody has seemed to enjoy and love for so many years. And now Shaq and, uh, well, to an extent, Charles mm-hmm. Barkley. But mm-hmm. Charles – you know, Shaq is just coming off as a cantankerous old man at this point in time. Sorry, Laker Tom, when I say that. But when, no, you know, I think he, you're he, absolutely right, Gerald. He, he's coming off as Clint Eastwood in El Torino, I think was probably the best way I could <laughs> say it, you know, where he stands out in front of the lawn and just growls at everybody. And then you've got Charles Barkley, who, you know, is kind of, and thank you for the thumbs up, by the way. Uh, I just want to go ahead and say with Charles Barkley, though, it comes up with him that nobody takes him seriously. And he's a clown character. And, and you know, he has those wild predictions that never come true. And it's kind of funny. But when it gets a little bit mean-spirited, that's when I think it draws the line and it goes over it. Kenny, I think, has, needs to take a little bit more control of these conversations. I know he wants to be all these guys' buddies. And I know he hosts the party during the All-Star break and all that. But he needs to start taking control of these guys and saying, you know what? We need to take a step back and see what made this show work the way it did. Why does it have like that room full of sports Emmys? If you probably go to the office right now, because they seemingly win it every single year. But when you just comes down to it and they continue to uh, start acting like that a little bit more and a little bit more, a little bit more, it just becomes like ESPN's first take. And I don't think that's the right way to go. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right, Gerald. There, there has been a lot of, uh, a lot of criticism of the comments that Shaq made and the tone that he sort of took in those. Some of it is also the the guys who just can't admit that the players today might be better than they were. I just that's the, that's the basketball and human evolution. That they might that they might train like a lot harder than both of you guys did in your days. That yeah. they might watch their diet a lot better than you guys did in your days. That they might not be fifty pounds overweight by the time they're on the primetime TV and being analyzing the games when their careers are over. So it's an interesting combination. And I tend to think that your comparison to Clint Eastwood in that movie is probably pretty adept. There's no doubt that both them, both Shaq and Charles were great players in their day, but neither one of them were top five players. Not all-time top five players. Oh, Maybe okay. not even all-time top ten players. Ooh, well, Shaq, I'd fight you on that one with Shaq. I, I, I'd fight top you. 10, on that one. I can name ten guys right now. I think are better players. Than uh, I guys. don't want to go into that because that's just going to go off in a different direction. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, you know, send me a, send I, me a I text of your ten players then. I, I don't I'll know. Send you a text of ten I don't, players. I, I don't, well, actually, you know what? Let's save that for another day. Let's save that for another okay. podcast. Well, uh, but. Kareem, I don't know. You know, Kareem was a great one. Kareem was one of the great and, and things that he's done for the black community <laughs> is just awesome. I take 33 over Shaq any day. I don't know about that one. But uh, okay, Ooh. Magic Mag, go ahead. Yeah, you I don't know. Years, you might get two good years yeah. out of Shaq. Well, prime Shaq state. versus Prime <laughs> Kareem. I don't know. That's a great match. That, that's a matchup I would have loved to have seen. How about that? I'll leave it at that. I remember Kareem. I remember Kareem ramming the ball down Will's throat. I, I you can't tell Gerald, me that he can't do the same thing to Shaq a lot easier than Wilt. Gerald, not not only would I go through the turnstiles to see that matchup, I would jump and skip all the way <laughs> to my seat to see those two play in their primes. Yeah, absolutely. Because Shaq, I mean, you called him a bully, but the way he played was like a bully, and. No, I don't think was, no, I, I, I don't think I don't think Chamberlain that. or Kareem. Yeah, well, I like to see Shaq. You know, I, I, you know, but, for example, let's let's uh, let's have Shaq try to cover somebody shooting threes out of the line. Oh no, like, he wouldn't do like it. Like Joker, or, how how's he going to do uh, against the five out offense? Uh, Kevin hey, Salmani Gerald, just checked in. He just wanted to say that he has uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar above Shaq. So there you go. There's there's one on your side. But go ahead, Sean. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I was going to ask Gerald. Um, about 20 years ago, I started going to Toronto Raptors games, and there were whispers that Charles Barkley wanted to get a front office job. 
but people around the league laughed at that. And when he finally came out and said that, you know, the analytics guys, they're nerds, they didn't get any of the girls, that I think that that was the final <laughs> nail in the coffin for him because, I mean, he just seems anti to the way a front office in the NBA in 2020 would want to be run. Well, I mean, these are billion-dollar businesses. These are multi-billion-dollar businesses. And you got to have the best eyes and the best analytical minds look at these organizations. And you unfortunately, a bad golfer stepping in there by the name of Charles Barkley is not going to be that individual you want running your team. Go ahead. You can, look at it, you can also look at it this way, that uh, if you – if you can't get a job running a franchise and you're a former player like those guys are, then you, then you become a TV analyst. Well, I mean, it goes with magic, magic, you know, he couldn't die, You know, he couldn't put his 100% devotion to the job. Right. And if you don't, you see what happens. I mean, Jerry West, in my opinion, is probably the best great player to executive that's ever had. I mean, cause you see, the things that he committed to because he committed the time. He yeah. didn't even want to coach. You saw him as a coach. He was a lousy coach. A lot of the best coaches and general managers happen to come from role players. Yeah. But he's, he's one of those. basically had to substitute intelligence for natural talent in order to, to succeed in the league. But um, you see him, uh, Larry Bird. I mean, the list is very small as the number yeah. of great players that were able to go ahead. Well, and, and Larry Bird basically – had was fired from the job. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean he, for he, Indiana to fire Larry bird or to allow him to resign. Yes. Uh, but he was there with the team a long time. Uh, yeah. Led them to some, some great playoff charges. So yeah. he does. Jerry, he you know, Jerry West was, a, was the, probably the prime example. I agree. Oh, with yeah. you of a, of a yeah, player I mean, who, and a great player yeah. who could actually make that transition to be an impactful manager. Exactly. In, in business, I, yeah, in as understanding a coach, the game. No, that's why he he wasn't a great coach, but you could see right. him as a general manager, and he made the right maneuvers. He couldn't even watch the Lakers game. I mean, come on, you, you want to have Charles and and you want to have Charles and Shaq choose your roster? No, <laughs> I take either one of them on in a in a in a fantasy league any well, day of the game. That, Go ahead. That's another thing. Yeah, that's another thing I wanted to ask you, Gerald, because as you were saying, Kenny Smith is trying to get into a front office, and as you were saying they might be deterring him from actually reaching that goal. Like you said, like he needs to exercise more control. If you look at Chauncey Billups, Billups wants to be a coach or a, or a member of a front office too. And he doesn't act like that on the jump or whenever he's on ESPN. Right. I've noticed yeah. that. Isn't he, uh, isn't he though part of a, an organization now though? Didn't he move on from ESPN or am I mistaken? He might have. He might have. I'll look that okay. up. But I'll look that up. But um, I will say this: uh, it is a great time, though, on LakerHolics.com, where you can have these conversations. We will have at some point in time. I'm not sure when, but I'm going to have in the next couple of weeks. Go us. Go ahead, and, and I don't want to get too mean on each other's uh, top ten NBA players <laughs> list. But at some point in time, we will have an all-time top ten players list coming up in the next couple of weeks. We'll get an all nice and prepared. We'll get Jamie. We'll see if we can get L. Rob to come and stop by to share their thoughts on the top 10 all time. But guys, it was a great win for the Lakers. 101 to 90. Excellent first half. Not so excellent second half. But again, hopefully they can go ahead and continue. The game was called at the end of the first half, Gerald. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's simple, you know? I wish I wish I, would, I wish game that was over, the case. Exactly. But it, it, uh, it was a 101 to 90 victory over the Chicago Bulls. On Monday, we had to Cleveland and playing the surprising Cleveland Cavaliers, who we should definitely not take lightly because they've been very, very good at home. Uh, they got a got, hunch that LeBron's going to have a bigger game Monday. Oh, I would imagine so. <laughs> I would imagine so because uh, they're still very suspect on the defensive end. But with Allen there, you never know as a backup center who eventually will become the starting center because I think Drummond is – they're going to use utilize him in some sort of trade scenario, but he's playing very well. Allen's playing well since he's come over from Brooklyn. They've got a nice bench now with Tayshawn Prince also coming over. And, you know, they're a team that could possibly sneak into the playoffs. So we'll see. We'll see. The Lakers should not just go ahead and take them for granted. LeBron will single-handedly win the game in Cleveland. 
I hope so. I hope so indeed. But Sean, Laker Tom, we truly appreciate you stopping by. We'll be here after the game on Monday. It is in Cleveland, so it's going to be another early game, so people look out for that. But yes, we will be back on Monday. We want to thank so much, everybody, for watching and for listening. Well, I won't be vaccinated next week, but these guys will be lucky dogs that they are. <laughs> but again, we'll be back on Monday right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.